everybody, and welcome. We have got a great story to tell you today. You hear a lot of bad news during COVID, but we've got a really good story about a business that is exceeding revenues from its pre-COVID days. And with me today is the owner of that business, Nick Moon. Welcome, Nick. Hi. How are you, Angel? I am well. Nick is the owner of Melbourne Seafood Station. So he has four restaurants, but we're going to talk about one. And his the most recent one that he opened, which is in the Orlando, Florida area. Correct, Nick? Yes, in the Hunters Creek neighborhood of Orlando. The Hunters Creek neighborhood of Orlando. And this restaurant had only opened in September of 2019. And by March 2020, boom, the, uh, the axe came down with COVID, correct? It did. It really kind of kicked us in the gut. <laughs> Tell everybody a little bit about what you serve at Melbourne Seafood Station, which I might add the other three restaurants have been wildly successful. Absolutely. So we are a fast, casual seafood uh, restaurant. We focus on seafood boils. So it's primarily going to be shellfish, shrimp, lobster, crab, scallops, oysters, mussels, clams, that kind of thing. We also do fish and um, chicken as well. And it's fast casual, but it's a little pricey, correct? Compared to a uh, hamburger, it's gonna be a little bit pricey, but if you're comparing to Red Lobster or to another seafood restaurant, it's a really good value. Fantastic. So you opened up in September and then the COVID lockdown came and you were kind of unprepared. Well, I guess everybody was unprepared, but you were so new and you hadn't done this in any of your restaurants. You, you didn't even have delivery or online menus or any of that kind of thing set up, right? No, we definitely didn't have um, any delivery set up or any online. It was just people walking in and people calling in. And so how long before you set up delivery and what did you do exactly? So immediately we um, started repurposing employees as delivery drivers and uh, we signed up with Grubhub to handle deliveries for us. Okay, so I, this is when you and I started working together and you did one thing very early on that has made a tremendous difference in your business. What was that? Uh, we did a $29 family meal that uh, included two pounds of shrimp and they could get either rice or pasta with corn on the cob or broccoli. And that fed four people. And that was extremely successful promotion. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that was still a profitable deal. Yeah. So it was about a 50% food cost for us. Fantastic. And you're used to high food costs uh, in what you do anyway. But so you, you kind of pivoted immediately to provide that value. <clears throat> so then the next thing that we did which I loved, was the idea of, you know what, I'm glad that Grubhub is delivering, but I don't want to use them if I don't have to, so I want to self-deliver. So tell everybody what you did then. Uh, we're adding uh, cards in there to promote our own delivery. So you put a card in with each order that went out through Grubhub. Right, yeah, all orders are take out or uh, pick up or delivery, letting them know that we can deliver as well. And did you offer a discount for that first one? Yeah, it was uh, $5 off their, their first order. So inside of the Grubhub to go order, you put a coupon for $5 off if they ordered directly through you. Right. And I don't know if you know the percentage, but what kind of percentage shift did you see? Uh, it was fairly strong. Um, once the um, dining rooms were reopened again, we, we saw the delivery kind of fall off. But uh, in that period, we, we definitely saw an increase in delivery, maybe uh, about 50% more than we were doing before that. Okay, fantastic. And then over the course of time, you kept adjusting those family meals. We did. So originally there was only one <laughs> option, which was shrimp and um, the uh, two side options. And then, so we added broccoli as an option and we added um, salmon, cod or chicken even. So we had uh, four different options for the family meal for the $29. And did you see, was that, what percentage of sales did that family meal end up making of your, of your total revenue? Um, across <clears throat> all four of our restaurants, it was, um, in the beginning, it was about 30% of our revenue. Wow. 
that's a lot. People really did yeah. <laughs> gravitate towards that, didn't they? They did. So we actually added it to the menu now. So it's something that's on there permanently. And it's still about 10 to 15% of our sales. That's fantastic. When you open for dine-in, your delivery stayed strong, correct? The takeout uh, stayed strong. The delivery kind of um, fell off a little bit. So as we sit here today in August, what, what's your percentage delivery and dine-in? Dine-in is going to be about 40%. Delivery is about 10%. Uh, excuse me. Del uh, take Dine-in versus delivery and takeout. So yeah. Takeout is about 50% right now. Still? Yeah. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Um, another thing that you did during all of this craziness is you implemented a loyalty program. We did. And I think uh, when I ask our employees, like, what I, what's the number one thing you think that's working right now? That's what they say is a loyalty program. They say the customers are just loving it. Tell us a little bit about what your benefits are and what people have to do. So just for signing up, they're going to get a $10 reward in the mail. And so it takes about um, two weeks for them to get that. But that's that's the hook. So, hey, sign up for this. You're going to get $10 off right. your next meal. And then they also get um, a dollar for every or a point for every dollar that they spend. Every 200 points is a $10 reward. They're also getting a birthday coupon for $10 and a free entree on their anniversary. Have, you, anniversary. have you tracked customer frequency? I know you didn't have a before, but do you have uh, uh, any idea now of what customer frequency is? I don't have the exact numbers, but we are able to track it through the back end of our loyalty program every time they scan the card. And um, I don't have that data in my head, but we That's do have okay. to do it, yeah. And you are doing double points on Tuesday. Yes, so we wanted to see if we could increase business during the week. And so we decided to just do it on Tuesday, which was one of the slower days. And it uh, really works. Do you have a Do you have any numbers for us on that? What it What it meant in, in terms of increase? Yes, it's been about twenty to thirty percent increase since we started doing that. Wow, that's huge. That's big, yeah. That is really big. Fantastic. Now, most of your business is weekend business, correct? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday probably accounts for two thirds of our business. So, what you did was you created a pre order system and rewarded customers for ordering early. Tell us about that. Yep. So when we knew we were going to be really busy on um, Mother's Day and Father's Day and a couple other times, um, we implemented a $5 coupon toward their next purchase if they pre-ordered by the day before. And that really helped out. I mean, we, we had almost so many pre-orders that we weren't taking uh, new <laughs> orders. <laughs> That's amazing. And your Mother's Day was absolutely stellar, correct? Yeah. Across all of our locations, it was phenomenal. Best ever? Oh, yeah. Yep. Isn't that amazing? In the middle of all of this, the best ever. And was and, and the, your Mother's Day offer was the family meal with some additional things, correct? Yeah, we offered a... Um, it was a whole lobster uh, with scallops, shrimp, and uh, it was... I think it was... $30 or something like that from mom. It was a really good value. I want to make sure everybody knows that during this time, seafood prices were going down. So you weren't losing money on any of these things that you were making money. Oh yeah. That, that's one of the things that I've found has been the biggest um, savior is finding a, um, a good value item like a lobster or something that people uh, is really going to draw their attention in and then coming up with a great special and then promoting the heck out of it on social media. All right, let's talk about promotion because I know <laughs> that wasn't your favorite thing to do when we first met. Right. Uh, you've been more aggressive on social media. Tell us about some of the things that you've done that have worked for you. Um, the biggest thing is uh, taking like a really appetizing picture and then promoting it through Facebook ads and boosting posts. Um, we didn't do that consistently before. So we've been adding more money, at least $100 per, per post. And we've seen the, um, the revenue really take off from that. that. I believe it's because people are on their phones a lot with COVID. 
yeah you know, trying to get updates and um they're just they have more time to do that so that's really the best way to reach them that's fantastic so here we are a new restaurant that's not doing as well as it could be COVID hits you implement five or six key things menu items loyalty program marketing uh value oriented and why don't you tell everybody the upshot uh where your revenues are right now so right now our revenues for the last three months have been up 20 percent from where they were prior to COVID. it's amazing <laughs> so if anybody says you can't be making money during this time what do you tell them nick you have to try i mean you have <laughs> to try as many things as you can and find something that works and then stick to it and then find the next thing that works but you can't just sit back and do nothing. Absolutely. The, the, if you had said, I'm going to use my menu the way it is and people need to buy it this way, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. No, not at all. Exactly. So I want everybody to listen because Nick implemented quickly. When there are ideas, he, he executed quickly. He executed well. Uh, it didn't really take you that much time, right? It didn't cost you any money. No, no, it didn't. Uh, so it can be done. One other thing I want to talk to you about is a company called NUMA, which I did a podcast on, and I happen to mention to you, you actually went in and uh, ordered their service. So why don't you tell us a little about how that works and what, what results you've seen? Well, it's taken about two weeks to implement it um, because we do have four locations. We had to install it at four locations, train everybody, and get it set up. But... What it does is it gets to the phone calls that you can't get to. So um, in the busy periods, you're going to have um, a customer on the phone that you're trying to take an order with, another line on hold, and then other people trying to call in. And what NUMA does is it takes away uh, everybody but the customer that's either in front of you placing the order or the one that you're on the phone with by answering the phone for those other calls. And um, it uses an AI technology that um, responds to the basic converts the call into a text message where it can answer the customer's basic questions as far as what time you're open, uh, can I see your menu, those kind of things you can pre-record responses to. And then um, if they want to order, it gives them a link to put their order in, they pay for it, everything. We're going to have to circle back with you in a couple of months. <laughs> to see the effectiveness of it, because I think it's going to help a great deal. We did. So just um, on Saturday, we saw 20% of orders going through NUMA. You're kidding. So they, um, they really embraced it and used it to their advantage, the, the staff. Wow. That is amazing. Yep. So great we, job. Great job. So we are definitely going to come back in six months from now, Nick, and we're going to we're going to hope that you have doubled business everywhere. Okay. Particularly Orlando. Any plans for the next between now and the end of the year? Uh, you know, addressing what's going on because things aren't going to change so quickly. So, anything you've got in, on on your mind? Yeah, we're just gonna. Um try to come up with as many creative marketing and advertising campaigns as we can address around providing value for people, letting them know that, Hey, we're in this with you. Um, we're not trying to make um, a fortune right now. We're just trying to get people um, good food at a reasonable cost. Fantastic. I can't wait to get there to try it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Anytime. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much, Nick. Congratulations on doing such a great job. And I can't even, I can't wait to see how this story evolves six months from now. Thank you very much, Angel. I really appreciate all your help. Thank you. <laughs>